Hi, I'm Vine and welcome to Overthinking. Today's topic is the relation between concepts of swarm intelligence and hive mind. This time we are inside my area of expertise, but don't worry, I won't get technical or anything, I'll just share some fun facts. First, of course, we must start with some definitions, because the difference between swarm intelligence and hive mind are all in them. Let's start with swarm intelligence, as this is pretty specific term that is actually quite easy to understand. Swarm intelligence is the collective behavior of decentralized, self-organized systems, natural or artificial. This is the first sentence from Swarm Intelligence page on Wikipedia, and it's actually a good description of this concept. It has all four key words. Collective, behavior, decentralized, self-organized. And tells us that it could be natural or artificial. That's it. Now, time for hive mind definition. And the problem here is that hive mind doesn't really have a definition. It's an umbrella term for collective consciousness, collective intelligence, group think, swarm intelligence, universal mind, and anything that is collective with some connection to broad concept of mind. Seriously, I've even stumbled upon something like this. Hive mind, a notional entity consisting of a large number of people who share their knowledge or opinions with one another, regarded as producing either uncritical conformity or collective intelligence. This definition describes movements, religions, ideologies and fandoms. It also spoils my obvious plot twist about the real hive mind with human drones. Very unhelpful definition, I must say. But it gives us the point. Hive mind, as all umbrella terms, is whatever feels like hive mind. Real life bees, hive mind, drones communicating with each other to create visualization, hive mind. Mythological guard dog of Tartarus? Hive mind. Swarm of space bugs eating every planet on its path? Hive mind. Civilization of cyborgs assimilated to one super system? Hive mind. Fandom full of cringe fans simping to females animated in 2D? Hive mind. So, that's it, right? Like the case with square and a rectangle where swarm intelligence is a hive mind, but hive mind is not necessarily a swarm intelligence? Well, yes, but actually no. Because the concept of a hive mind comes from pop culture, not math nor any other field of science. That means there are also concepts associated with it that by extension tend to be incorrectly associated with swarm intelligence especially with the natural type systems. So, I choose two of them to talk about. First concept is what I call mindless drones. You probably know the drill with this one. An individual that is a part of the hive mind must be stripped of his mind, will and everything that makes him different from other drones in a hive. No. You can have swarm intelligence without mindless drones. In fact, the more information drones can collect, process and generate by themselves, the smarter swarm intelligence is. Swarm intelligence doesn't even require from its drones to be dependent on other drones. The more autonomous they are, the better. Example, bees. Besides the obvious time, when worker B goes to forage and act completely independent from the hive in her quest to obtain food, there are times when the whole hive must move and decide for a new place to stay. Bees then scout for suitable places and vote by dancing on where to move. During this time, 
Bees are expected to judge those new places how they see fit. Some go check it out first, some just vote on whatever is popular and some have their different opinion and spam the hive with votes on their one favorite place. When around two-thirds of the swarm agrees on one place, vote ends and all the bees are flying to a new hive. This, in essence, is just direct democracy, but with bees instead of people. No mindless drones here. And with this comparison to the political system, let's take on the second conflicting concept, Overmind. By Overmind, I mean a decision-making entity that just uses the hive to collect information and make decisions for it. You know, like some kind of despotic government. And now warning. If you ever get a task to program artificial swarm intelligence and implement an overmind-like entity in it, you just failed your task. This is a mechanism of centralized decision-making and, as we know, swarm intelligence requires it to be a decentralized system. So, any hive mind that has overmind in its structure, it's not a swarm intelligence. Even if given overmind just collects decisions from drones and gives them back the most popular one as a result, it's still a centralized system. Swarm intelligence requires drones to be self-organized without any organizing overmind that they depend on. Remember the previous example with bees? Did you notice that I didn't mention the queen there? It's because the queen bee doesn't really impact the hive vote at any significant level. The queen is just a broodmother, nothing more. It's the worker bees that make a decision. No overmind there. Now, let's pause for a moment and think about what I said so far. During my round, a certain relationship between swarm intelligence and hive mind begins to draw here. Both concepts touch upon political systems. Swarm intelligence is only similar to them because it organizes a given society of drones just like countries do. However, hive mind goes a step further and borrows elements of political systems. Why is that? Because in sci-fi, hive mind is often nothing other than allegory of communism. It's a very old cliché in the genre, which experienced its popularity peak during the Cold War. At the time, American authors passionately played with the individual versus collective conflict. They presented hive minds as political commentary of the communist system, figuratively showing all its shortcomings. The perfect example of this is the novel Starship Troopers by Robert A. Heinlein, which got brilliantly stupid film adaptation in 1997. The author did not hide that the hive mind there is presented as communism caricature, against which the protagonist has to fight at all costs. Over the years, this practice has consolidated in the idea of hive mind such concepts as mindless drones and overmind, which to this day annoy artificial intelligence programmers, biologists, and even some beekeepers. Fortunately, time flies. Words, ideologies, and contexts change. For some time now, hive minds has been appearing in sci-fi not as representation of communism, but as artificial or natural swarm intelligence systems. For example, Geth from Mass Effect. But let's get back to humans. So, is it possible to create human swarm intelligence without politics, declining intelligence or overmind? Yes. 
And to prove it, I will now give you an example of an algorithm for a swarm intelligence drone of exactly this type. Find or create the meme. Judge the meme. If you found it funny, remember the meme. Show remembered meme to other drones. Repeat step one. That's it. A simple swarm intelligence algorithm that evaluates and remembers memes. It has been working for some time now, filtering content on the internet to this day. Every once in a while, spreading the funniest meme across the web. Of course, you can argue that such intelligence is being simply stupid and in most cases it distributes not the funniest memes but the most popular ones. And this is true. This hive mind could benefit greatly if the drones would increase their meme evaluation skills. But regardless of outcome, that's what Swarm Intelligence is all about. Choosing not the arbitrarily best solution, but the solution that is good enough for all drones. And with that in mind, let's summarize my overthinking. Hivemind and Swarm Intelligence are deeply connected concepts, but differ in the details. Hivemind is a general pop culture term that is a rectangle to Swarm Intelligence. And Swarm Intelligence is a specific scientific term that is a square to Hivemind. If someone needs some more explanation or disagrees with my points, comments are for you. I may or may not respond to them. And for the next overthinking, I will probably do something simpler. So until then, bye!